So I say this a lot these days. When these um, intersections happen with technology for a presentation start, it usually means I haven't given thanks to Ilegba, who is the Orisha who guards the crossroads. So usually after I give thanks to Ilegba, things start to work. Um, so Mojibwa Ilegba, please open the way. Um, Obviously, the four panelists, we have a very broad time frame to talk about, from 1834 to the 1960s. And as you can see, these discussions overlap. Um, so it's kind of interesting that I'm going first, because I think I'm at the back end of that period. Um, but I just think that speaks to the connection of Bermuda's tradition of resistance. It's really hard to talk about one period and not connect with the others, particularly in a colonial context where historians have been forced to talk about the whole piece of our narrative in terms of not just black people, um, but Bermuda history in general, because Bermuda history indicts the colonial system in the island. So even from the, colon the colonizer's perspective, historicizing that experience hasn't been to the benefit of that system. Um, put another way, yes, it is quite true that black people on, in a public school system socialized to understand our history. But white Bermudians also aren't taught the history um, for some of the reasons that we talked about in the other panel as well. Uh, yes, here we are. This is, thank you so much. So I'm going to talk today about surprise, <laughs> black power, and Bermuda. Sure, you can, you can okay, Mike, you know. It's fine, yeah. I mean, no, yes, please, 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 please. Uh, Black Power in, in Bermuda, as you know, my first book on Black Power in Bermuda, um, some of the content you will be familiar with. Mike, is that better? Uh, also, some of the material in this book is part of my forthcoming work on Roosevelt Braun, Paolo Cameron Cafego, and that should be out sometime. Uh, next year. Um, maybe. So black power in Bermuda sought to dismantle British colonialism through political revolution. For me, this is important because the black power movement was very much a global movement. Uh, black power is usually looked at from a US context. And so the black power's branches outside of the United States is often seen as a, a sub bar of the movement in the United States, but Bermuda is a clear example of if we don't study black power in a global context, we kind of lose what that movement means. Mm -hmm. To me, that's doubly important because it also shows that Bermuda's history is not just important for Bermuda, but for the African diaspora in of itself. Mm -hmm. Most of the documents you'll see in this presentation are from archives I collected, newspapers, magazines. This is from the Black Beret Cadres. Phenomenal newsletter, the Black Beret. Uh, this is important because in many ways, Black Power in Bermuda was a reclaim, reclamation of African people's identity as much as it was a fight against the colonial system. Some of you may recognize this photograph. Um, some of you may not. It's from the governor's house grounds after the assassination um, of Sharples and ADC. Black Power did not fall from the sky in Bermuda. It was an extension of Bermuda's black radical tradition, resistance against slavery, Sally Bassett, uh, the UNIA, um, the Vieta boycotts. In the context of 1960s, the Balco uprisings in 65, but more specifically, the April 1968 uprisings um, after a group of black youth were not allowed to enter the April Fair. And I don't have the time to get into that. but. In response to that uprising, the British government sent troops to Bermuda um, to suppress this uprising that was just not about being allowed to enter a social event. This was also a strike against police brutality, colonialism, and racism. All three ideas, or all, the, all of these are contemporary concerns. Uh, in the aftermath, or actually in the moment of that uprising, Roosevelt Brown, who was a member of the Progressive Labor Party, organizes the PLP Youth Wing, in an effort to try to politicize these youth from back at home. 
Paulu had, as we know, by this time, been across the world. He'd been in Kenya, Liberia, met Malcolm X in Kenya during a second visit. He was already being seen as someone who could give a voice of experience to the Black Power movement in the United States. He attends the Philadelphia Black Power Conference in 1968. His acts to host the Black Power Conference in Bermuda, which he does. So Bermuda hosts, as we know, the first international Black Power Conference uh, that takes place outside of the United States. According to the Central Intelligence Agency, uh, there were three major black power leaders in the Caribbean in the 1970s. One was Stokely Carmichael, i.e. Kwame Ture, that will come as no surprise. Roosevelt Douglas, who was from Dominica, he was also very much involved in the black power movement in Toronto. Number three was our own Paolo. This is important for me because it speaks to the visibility of Paolo as a black power activist and also indicts his invisibility in terms of how we do not totally understand his global impact in movements of black power, pan-Africanism, ecolo ecological justice across the world. This document came from the US State Department archives where they were aware that Paolo was organizing or recruiting conference participants in the US via DC and other spaces. As I've talked about in other conferences and lectures in my book, the British, the US, even the French, Canadian governments were concerned with black power spread across the world. In this particular moment, they conspired to suppress this conference in Bermuda. So a number of activists who would have attended, like the Caribbean's Walter Rodney, did not make it, but women like um, Queen Mother Moore and other activists like Acklin Lynch, who also was our keynote speaker at the conference we had in, I had, we organized with Dr. Francis and on the Black Power Conference some years ago, were able to attend. Weeks later, Paulu finds himself in Australia where he's asked to help in Australia's Bergen and Black Power movement by a group called the Aboriginal Advancement League. This photograph is courtesy of Australia's security intelligence organization. Um, this is the photograph of him when he enters um, Victoria Airport on his way to Melbourne. Next to him are these two really critical black power activists in Australia, Bob Mazza and Bruce McGuinness, who he would invite um, to the United States to a conference called the Congress of African Peoples held in Atlanta in 1970. This is Bob, Bob, Bob Mazza to the left. The middle is Patricia Corwer. Um, she's still with us. Uh, when I traveled to Australia, she had a lot to say about Paolo's impact um, on the black power movement in the Pacific. And we all know this photograph. Um, this is from the Blackberry Cadre. Some of these who were also, some of these members were involved in the uprising in 1968. They joined the PLP Youth Wing a year later after the Black Power Conference, which they formally hosted, or sponsored rather. They created the Blackberry Cadre. To the left is John Hilton Bassett. Um, I'm sure we can guess the others. We see Jennifer Smith, the Stuart Parent Chief. There's also Cal Shabazz Bassett, um, spent time as a student in Chicago. He was close friends with um, Fred Hampton, a major black power, Black Panther, Chicago, who was murdered by the FBI, or the Chicago Police Department, in collaboration with the FBI. The cadre became the vanguard of black power in Bermuda. Um, they did a number of really amazing work. They created liberation schools. The magazine, The Black Beret, once again, it's a phenomenal transnational journal of anti-colonialism, solidarity. The Black Beret asks this question, is Bermuda like a little Rhodesia? So there's connection with South Africa. We're really at the forefront of black power in Bermuda, which also reveals another dynamic of black power globally as an as a anti-colonial movement. As stated, this was a this was really of concern to, um, to major Western uh, governments. Not all were black. So, so in the Caribbean, for example, um, Paulu cannot travel to a number of countries. Black power activists, Dr. Carmichael cannot enter Trinidad, the country he's born in. Um, so black power is also being repressed by black governments, which also speaks to the dynamic of, we cannot really talk about black power, we don't talk about class. Mm -hmm. 
if you don't talk about the creation of, of a black elite class, it also would defend its own interests uh, via support of um, capitalism and other kind of systems of dominance. They beleaguered the movement via collaborative international networks of intelligence and repression, which begs another point. Usually when we talk about the repression of black power, it's in the context of the FBI's Pro program, which is important. But to really understand the suppression of black power and the fight against the repression, we have to look at how other state forces also use or invest the resources in trying to separate the black power movement, which is one of the reasons why we don't think of it as a global movement because through propaganda, through education, um, and other means, they've cornered this narrative of black power in the United States. Mm. This is a photograph from 1971. This was a, a, um, a picture taken during a Kadre protest um, in support of Angela Davis. According to the State Department, the Kadre was Che Guevara at his most militant. I should have put a picture of Che Guevara next to that quote, but I think you all know who Guevara looks like. Um, but that says a lot in terms of not just how the state saw the cadre, but the potential of this organization in a small place like Bermuda, but the potential impact that it could have, not just in Bermuda, beyond. So the British Foreign and Commonwealth Organization attacked the cadre through the creation of laws, infiltration, surveillance, and once again, propaganda. My time is up, but I will finish with this. Uh, the, the FCO saw black power in the Caribbean as approaching the momentum of 1960s African nationalism. In other words, the very process that liberated Africa during the 1960s, they saw black power as having that same momentum. In other words, this is not just a sidebar movement that may come and go. It has the potential to transform the island from plant or the Caribbean from plantation economies that the region has suffered from for hundreds of years. So they attacked the movement. Uh, as we all know, John Oton Bassett is arrested after the cadre burned to Union Jack in City Hall on a hot Saturday afternoon in 1970. He was charged under an offensive behavior bill, which was designed just to attack the cadre. To me, this is striking, and it also speaks to the whitewashing that recently took place at City Hall in terms of the Sunday morning. But I don't have time to talk about that much further. But when you push, folks push back. Um, we don't know enough about Bach Burroughs. Um, we do talk about national heroes. Wow. But in other social contexts, the, the heroes are the ones who fight against the colonial system. They may be the... May be the the people win, and then the folks who are defined as criminals, they become heroes after the fact. Facts. So Mandela is a terrorist while he's in prison Facts. on Robben Island. His father, ANC, Facts. has a youth wing. It leads an armed struggle against the apartheid, apartheid system. Once they win, national hero, nobody's afraid to talk about Mandela. Facts. When we talk about Mandela, we talk about Mandela in terms of peace and love and unity and togetherness. So if Bermuda was to be an independent country, what would we say about Buck Burroughs? Would he still be the criminal, the person we dance around, or would he be transformed? So is, that, so is the image of Buck Burroughs about himself or the political moment we find Bermuda in? Um, once again, my time has been up. <laughs> These photographs were not in my book. Uh, because the state had some issues with those sources, but I still have them, and hopefully they will be in the next. Thank you very much for your time.